Philadelphia Phillies baseball on Comcast Sportsnet, part of the NBC Sports Group. The 10-day West Coast trip started off in fine fashion. The pitching was elite as usual, and the defense was getting leather on everything. The offense hit a mid-trip low at the plate, and the defense saw its own share of bumps and bruises. Finally, last night in the desert, the offense returned to the lineup when it was needed most, and it did it in a big way, leaving only a select few still hiding their identity. of issues with the Phillies if a win today against the Arizona Diamondbacks and they can finish up this road trip with a record of five and five as they're two games under 500 and their offense woke up in last night's ball game. Hi everybody I'm Tom McCarthy along with Chris Wheeler. Today is the final day of this long road trip for the Phillies then an off day tomorrow before they return home for four against the Cubs and now the optimism for the Phillies is that they can finish up this road trip five and five. Well, the old axiom, Tom, play 500 baseball on the road and do really, really well at home. Well, the Phillies have been way above 500 the last few years on the road. Obviously, they have some struggles going on right now. But you're right. If you could finish five and five on this trip with the way the offense has gone until the last couple of nights, that would really, really be good. Plus, you got a long plane ride home. You have a day off tomorrow. So anytime you can win that last game of a road trip with all that time before you play again, it's always nice. And the Phillies have gotten out of the basement. Yes, it's by percentage points over the Miami Marlins, but they're out of the basement in the National League East. All right, Cole Hamels takes the baseball today. He wasn't spectacular in his last start. As he said, he was trying to, he couldn't really throw strikes with all of his pitches. He wants to do that today, even though he did pitch six effective innings last time. Yeah, well, his location was off last time. He really couldn't throw the baseball where he wanted to. Like every other pitcher, great pitchers, their fastball sets up everything. He didn't have real good fastball command, so his other stuff wasn't as effective but you know you see him throw his change up one thing we always tell people when they ask us about Cole Hamels what a great athlete he is and look at the two plays he made in this game that one on that bunt here's another one just kind of a little swinging bunt down the first baseline very cool calm collected he can run the bases he can swing the bat Cole Hamels is a complete major league player this is his overall record and look what he's done both home and on the road there's really nothing that jumps out at you one way or the other he's been very very good both plays and that strikeout walk ratio on the road, the best among all active National League starters. Cole Hamels, when he goes out to pitch, you always expect him to pitch well. And one of the real oddities is last time out, he was called for two balks in the same game. But no Bob Davidson, no Dan Bellino today as far as the umpiring crew goes. So it will be Cole Hamels on the mound for the Phillies this afternoon, and he'll be opposed by Trevor Cahill, who's making his fourth start at Diamondbacks uniform. He pitched very well against the Phillies last year in his only career appearance against them. Well, Hunter Pence last night opposite way with this two-run home run. Lance Dix followed with a two-run home run his own, and of course Shane Victorino had one, a three-homer night. Back to the Comcast Network Studios when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Every new Toyota purchase comes with Toyota Care. By Coca-Cola, the official soft drink of the Phillies. By Citizens Bank, we're for homes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you. By Xfinity, only from Comcast, the official HD triple play provider of the Phillies. And by Independence Blue Cross. No matter where you are in life or business, we have plans that fit. Go to plansthatfit.com.
to get to five and five and crowd settling in for an early afternoon matchup which features the roof closed here at Chase Field. Let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity only from Comcast leading it off in left field Juan Pierre Placido Polanco bat second and third Shane Victorino is up to the three hole. He's in center field Hunter pencil back cleanup Lance Nix has been hot the last couple of games. He's at first base. He'll bat fifth. Pete Orr sixth. And the bottom third of Ruiz, Freddie Galvis, who's making his first major league start at shortstop. And then Cole Hamels, who will bat ninth. And they'll face 24-year-old right-hander Trevor Cahill, who actually has become a pretty good major league pitcher. Uh, his stuff is, uh, is really nasty sometimes. He is an unbelievable sinker that runs all over the place. A better breaking ball has improved. And you see right-handed hitters, they really have trouble with this guy because of all the movement. So Phillies have a lot of left-handed hitters in this lineup. Here's our scouting report on him, and we'll talk about the sinker and show it to you in a little while how much it moves all over the strike zone. He had a tremendous year two years ago with the ace. Well, here's Juan Pierre to lead it off for the Phillies, and we're underway as the first pitch is taken for a strike. It's 0-1. Juan Pierre is 10th in the league in hitting at 333. No home runs, four runs batted in. He was three for eight in the first two games of the series, and quite honestly, whether Charlie wants to give somebody else a chance at the top of the order in left field, Pierre has been one of the more consistent hitters as he grounds it foul. And you, you watch um, Trevor Cahill, and, and for a point of reference, think back to a guy that used to pitch here named Brandon Webb, and he's very similar to Brandon Webb in the, the way he sinks the ball constantly. According to some scouts I was talking to before the game, they say they think he has a better breaking ball than Webb. Inside, two and two. But Brandon Webb could go a whole game and throw all sinkers when he was going well. And then he hurt his shoulder and was never really able to come back, pitch at the major league level. Well, Cahill was acquired uh, from the Oakland A's during this offseason. He signed through 2015. Now the Diamondbacks have an option for 2016 and 17 as Pierre sends one to right center field, Upton on the run, and he gets there. Somehow it hung up there for him. And there's one away. Well, it's time now for our keys to this afternoon's game. Phillies trying to finish 500, be 5 and 5. That would be quite a feat winning the last couple games. Well, Cahill, you have to make him bring the ball up. Talked about what a sinker ball pitcher he is. Well, are the bats alive? Hope so. Yeah, nice night last night for the Phillies as uh, they were able to walk away with. A very comfortable win. Eight to five, the final. Pete Orr, well, he had his first three RBI game in his major league career. How about among active players? He was the the longest at bat wise guy without three RBIs in the game. We got him with one swing of the yeah. bat. Bases clearing double. A triple. Yeah, triple. One ball, one strike to count to Polanco. Keep thinking that was a double. For the road trip, Polanco five for 25, one for four in last night's game. Or I should say one for four in the series so far. And he takes outside two and one. He had a sacrifice bun in last night's ball game. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Debbie Carlson of Bethlehem. If the Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, then Debbie will win $100. Outside three and one. Polanco is 23 hits away from 2000 for his career. The Phillies really need to get him going, but here's the point we're trying to make is this guy will run some deep counts. You make him bring the ball up, you know, probably going to hit a lot harder than that, but you know, right off the end of the bat, it works. But, you know, hit 3 0, hit 3 1, 2 0 against Cahill, you have a chance to hurt him. His first outing in a Diamondbacks uniform, he walked six. And that goes to your point about running some deep counts. Right. Here's Shane Victorino off his old friend and teammate Mike Zagurski. He ran a 3 1 count. Shane is a real high ball hitter from the right side. And all four of his home runs this year have come right handed. His average up to 271 with those four home runs. Four home runs tied for fifth in the National League. Matt Kemp leads the way. And Victorino chops it foul. Swing left handed. It just seems like he's jumping everything. He's staying back a little bit better right handed. And you know, hitters know when they're jumping at the ball. It's just a matter of how to stop doing. It. Well, he has two hits in the series, and both of the hits uh, have been home runs, including the one you just saw. Well, you see him just lunge there at that first pitch. 
not able to stay back the way he does when he swings well left handed. That one's in the air to center field playable for Pollock. And there are two outs. So Polanco goes back to first. Umpires for today's ball game. Ed Rapuano is behind the plate in his 21st year as a major league umpire. Angel Hernandez over at first. Mark Carlson at second. And Ed Hickox over at third. John is a really good ball and strike umpire. He was actually the third base umpire during the postseason. When Roy Halladay threw his no hitter for the Phillies. Here's Hunter Pence with two away. And Pence takes one low and it goes right through the five hole of the catcher Henry Blanco. Here's Hunter Pence got a pitch away from Cole Mentor. Justin Upton way up in the air and he's so athletic he thought he was going to catch that ball and he almost did. So Polanco's in scoring position. We'll see how they score that. It's probably a pass ball to Blanco and that's what they do score it. I don't think he even realized it was out of his glove. It looked like a knuckleball. Still thought he had it. He was looking around for it. See if the Phillies can strike first here against Cahill. You see the numbers we showed that Cahill against right handed batters. He has had tremendous success against them this year. Last outing against the Braves, he went five and two thirds. He allowed seven runs, four of which were earned. Blanco's just having trouble hanging on to the ball right now. That would look like a breaking ball there, and it just folded. Yeah, it's a slider. <laughs> right off the tip of his glove. And now three and oh, we'll see if Pence gets the green light. And he takes strike one. Last couple of times when he's had the count three oh. It almost looks like he's had the green light or he's had the, the stop sign up. And now it's three and one. Lance Nix on deck. Well, that's one of the reasons why he just had a red light there. Out in front, three and two. Breaking ball to go to three two as he really fooled him. Nix is hot swinging the battle from the left side. So, you know, Charlie's thinking even right there, I don't mind if Nix or if Pence would walk here, I'll get Nix up. At least don't walk a whole lot. No, they've walked one time in this series so far. Ground ball over to third. Oh, through the hole and into left field. Polanco's going to score, and the Phillies will strike first. Cody Ransom kind of gave up on that, thinking the shortstop Willie Bloomquist would get to it, and it went right through the middle of both of them. One nothing Phils. Yeah, they got a real break there. That's an out. Absolutely an out. Third baseman to his left has to go. It's like a center fielder. You're supposed to go for everything. You know, and then you cut in front of the shortstop. That'll happen once in a while. But as Tom described it, watch. They're even over. They're over on the line a little bit. But Ransom just, for whatever reason, just pulls up short. And that ball, that's a tough play for the shortstop in the hole. Yeah, I don't know if he would have gotten Pence at first anyway, because he may have had to leave his feet. But I, I think he thought his shortstop was closer to it. Well, that they were going to keep the ball in the infield that way and at least prevent the run with two outs. Well, now here's Lance Nix, five for 13 on the road. That's nice to see him get a break like that because sh that's an out. And sh they should be out of the inning to the D-backs. Nix making his sixth start over at first base. He's four for four in the series. Now that includes three for three in last night's game. This guy likes the ball down like a lot of left-handed hitters do. And Cahill's a perfect pitcher for him to hit off. Because everything that Cahill throws for him to be effective goes down. Two and one the cap. Here's the home run of Coleman or last night. That thing was up and out over the plate a little bit. He got to put a good swing on it. Ahead, two balls and one strike. Another, another hitter, excuse me, Tom, another hitter ahead. 
uh, of the count in this inning, which is good. Off the end of the bat, a flare down the left field line. Ransom is out. He dives. He didn't get it. It's a fair ball. Pence was running all the way. He's going to be stopped. Nope. Now he's going to go. Here's the throw to the plate, and he is out at the plate. Man, I thought he slid to the top side of the plate to get past the tag of Blanco. I don't know if he ran through the stop sign or if there was indecisiveness all the way around, but a break for the Diamondbacks and a heck of a throw from Kubel. That's his fifth outfield assist of the season. Well, here's the play on the fly. That's a heck of a throw, and it looked like he did get him. Phillies lead it 1-0. Pence at the plate, so he's down one nothing as we go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at his lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, only from Comcast. Bloomquist, Hill, and Upton, followed by Kubel, Ransom, and Goldschmidt. And the bottom third of A.J. Pollock, Henry Blanco, and Trevor Cahill. They'll face Philly's left-hander Cole Hamels. The 28-year-old is 2-1 and one so far this year. Cole Hamels pitching very, very well. Only two walks. He a little over hits per innings pitch, but walks and strikeout. Tremendous ratio. And uh, the opposition hitting 282 against him. Well, here's Willie Bloomquist to start it off, and he'll take a strike. It's 0 1. Cole had, did not have real good fastball command his last time out. The scouting report on him. The cutter sets up everything for him as far as outs, but his fastball, like all great pitchers, he has to be able to throw it for strikes. Bloomquist rolls it foul, and it's 0 2. Bloomquist this year hitting 226 with no homers and one run batted in. He's not having at bat against Cole for his career. Nick Blanco way over on the line towards third against his right handed batter. Got him. Well, oh, he may have gotten a piece of it. Yeah, he did. But the tip was the glove, but it wasn't. It was the bat and the glove. So it remains 0 and 2. Carlos Ruiz back behind the plate to start today. Ryan Schneider did a heck of a job last night with Vance Worley on the mound. Oh, just missed off the outside corner. So one and two. That's a really good spot to throw your fastball. Oh, Try the look like a cutter off the inside part of the plate. Two and two the count. See Bloomquist's career numbers against the Phillies. One for 19. He's one for four in this series. And a liner to left field. That's going to be a fair ball, and it's going to go to the fence. So Bloomquist is going to get only his second hit of the year against left-handed pitching, and it's a leadoff double here in the first. Here's a play that ended the last half inning. That's a fair ball off Ransom's glove. Kubel does a great job getting to it quickly. Then that fan down there tells him to throw home, and he listened to him. Made a really good throw and a good tag by Blanca. Now Pence hesitates right there, and that's what killed him. He trying to figure out how he didn't score easily on that play with two outs. And if he'd have run the whole time, 
he would have scored with no problem. But there had to be some hesitation somewhere. And that's where you saw it. Yeah, I guess he thought that it was a foul ball and he just decided to do a little umpire. Yeah, that's not a good idea. So here's Aaron Hill, two for eight in the series with a runner at second. He bunts up the third base line and it rolls foul. And it's 0 1. Polanco was playing back, so if that had stayed fair, then Blutquist would have been at third and Hill probably would have beaten that out for a hit. And that's Aaron Hill bunting for a base hit, but also figured, well, even if I don't get it, I'll get him over. And that's what they're trying to do there to get the runner to third base. I can't believe they put a bump on there. You know, that's more or less that's the hitter's decision. Aaron Hill, six for 17 against left handed pitching. See so, how yeah, the Phillies have things aligned all the way around. Pence is a few steps over toward the line and right. And 0 and 2 the count to hit. He's gotten ahead of the first two hitters 0 and 2. Yeah, he thought he had Bloomquist out on strikes a couple times. He's going upstairs with a fastball. Bloomquist goes. The pitch is popped up behind the plate. Ruiz off with the mask. Does he have room? He does. And the throw to second. Not in time. And there's one away. Good pitch by Cole. Good job by Carlos Ruiz and he working together there. Get ahead and then go for the intentional high fastball to see if he chased and he did. He kept it in play, which was good for the Phillies. I think Carlos just reminded Ruiz, reminded Hamels to uh, keep an eye on the runner at second because he had that base stolen. Yeah, and now with one out, they really, uh, if he thinks he can go, he's going to try and go now. But he better make it with Upton up. Upton has four hits in the series. His average up to 239. His first home run of the year came in the series. His first RBI. So we get a miss. It's 0 and 1. Well, Bloomquist touched third and didn't touch it back. It's interesting. I'm not sure if the uh, third base umpire Ed Hickok saw it or not. That shows you the kind of jump he had because he had that base stolen. If Hill had let it go by, now Hill would have been probably been out. Oh, and won the count to Upton. Inside with a cutter, one ball and one strike. Phillies are five and one in Hamill's six starts against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Of those six, he's three and one here, personally, with a 3.71 earned run average in four games. In one game here two years ago, I think he threw three home runs in that game, and he had a lead too. And he had a lead, and they were they just peppered him with long balls. And Kelly uh, Johnson hit one off him. Snyder, the catcher, hit one. Runner goes and Hamels has him. He turned at the last moment and Bloomquist is caught between second and third. The fake by Polanco. And now the run down continues. Hamels throws it high. They got to get those throws down a little bit. Run this out. is going an awful long time. And Nix, the first baseman, is there to apply the tag. Yeah, that was not a good rundown, but they got him anyway. I think what made it a longer one is when Polanco missed him. Missed him. When Bloomquist spun out of the baselines. That was not the way they practiced it in Clearwater, but it worked. And great job by Cole Hamels anticipating what was going on back there. Step off, you're the fifth infielder. And that was the fake Tom was talking about. Now Hamels gets involved here. He throws a bar of soap to second. And finally, Galvis does what you have to do run him back to where he came from. And that's what you try to do in the rundown play. All right, wheels, here we go. One, go five, one, four, six, three. Nice. So one, five, one, four, six, three. Six. Different players or six different touches as Hamels gets up to non strikes. Is that a caught stealing since he was headed for third? Uh, we'll check that. I think it is, but we'll check that. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We go to the second. Phillies on top, one nothing.
Phillies with one run on three hits. Arizona no runs on one hit. It'll be Pete Orr, Carlos Ruiz, Freddie Galvis. Orr had a heck of a night last night. His average up to 364. He's three for six so far in the series. A double, a triple, three runs batted in. And a swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. The official scorer shall charge a runner is caught stealing at one. He tries to steal. Okay. So but that it, was a caught steal. Oh, See, I, he's trying to steal there, right? He was trying to steal. No, I'm just reading the rule book. He's picked off a base and tries to advance. He wasn't picked off. He was trying to steal third base. Correct. I thought that, but I, I know that there's a change in the way they're scoring. Uh, in a certain play. Okay. But that not in that play. All right. So we think it's a caught stealing. Yes. Here's the 2 2 to Orr. Ground ball right side. Aaron Hill to his left nearly stumbled as he got that ball. And one away here in the second. So with one out here is Carlos Ruiz. Follow the Phillies with the MLB.com at bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android. And Windows Mobile get live audio, pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text that bat to 31826 or visit Phillies.com for details. Carlos just one hit in the series, one hit in five at bats. His numbers are amazing against the Diamondbacks, though, particularly over his last dozen games. Hitting 457. Here at Chase Field. Swing and a miss, one ball and one strike. Is he alright? Looks like he did something strange there and he's taking a long time to come back. Well, I don't know if his bat hit Henry Blanco and if he's giving him a courtesy on that, because the umpire looked down and asked Blanco if he was okay. But he does have that sore left mm -hmm. wrist. So. No, it just just looked like he took kind of a strange swing there and then he's taking his time getting back in the box. That could have been just being nice to your fellow catcher. Two and two the count to Ruiz. I guess since Ryan Roberts is not playing again today, then Blanco will be the tap man for the fans to cheer for. <laughs> There's Ryan Roberts. And Ruiz lines it to left field. And there's a one out single and the fourth hit of the day for the Phillies. Well, with Ruiz on first, Freddie Galvis the batter. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph? Well, T Mac, uh, when you're the field reporter for a Major League Baseball <laughs> team and you visit Chase Field, the, uh, there is one place you have to stop, of course, and that is the pool. I actually have taken a dip here in the hot tub. But you never want to go to the pool all by yourself, right? So I right. invited a friend along, and he's going to get in the pool. Sarge, when do you plan on getting in the water? That's what everyone wants to know. Actually, let me tell you, I just had my second sandwich, and you know you're not supposed to get in the water. Yeah. Until like 45 minutes from now, right? <laughs> by then I'll be doing my innings, right? So I'll leave the sandwich there with you. Well, there you have it. So Sarge's going to take a dip uh, maybe after the sixth inning because he's got he's to let the whole digestion process work, guys. But, you know, you can rent this out uh, down in, here in Arizona. It's a terrific spot to watch the game. The folks here are nice enough to invite us in. So we, we appreciate that. Uh, and it is getting hot in the hot tub right now, I can tell you that. How about this? Carlos Ruiz is going to try to score all the way from first, and he is out Man. on a wild pitch. It hit the uh, weight in the on deck circle and started to run toward the opening of the Phillies dugout. Henry Blanco was taking a, his sweet time to go after the ball. So Ruiz went to third and then saw that home plate was vacated. So he tried to win the race with Cody Ransom to home plate and he is retired. Well they're being aggressive today but they're running themselves right out of innings. That's a wild pitch. It gets it all started and then Blanco thought it was just going to be an easy well he's going to go down to second as Tom said it hit that weight and kicked off crazy now Carlos Ruiz right here at this point I don't think Juan Samuel waved him he's going to try and outrun the third baseman ransom yeah. his home plate was not uh, covered and you know the thought process it's okay but 
you know you got to be able to run a little bit better. Well, Sammy's sitting over at third base right now, thinking, "What the heck's going on? What are my guy's doing to me right now." But that is a decision that Carlos made on his own. Oh, absolutely. One and two, the count. By the way, how about Sarge's line about not going swimming a half hour, 45 minutes till he, after he? You know that was good. And the last time I saw him near water like that, he was looking for a golf ball. <laughs> And it was his golf ball. <laughs> well, he helped look for others. Yeah. Here we go. Look at that. Henry Blanco's got the ball. He's saying, hey, somebody better cover home. He does a heck of a job leading Ransom here, too. Let's see, home plate is completely open. Ransom's coming down the line here. And look how far he has to throw it to lead him and does a very good job on that. And then Ransom doesn't panic and tags Ruiz. Why do you think he didn't go after the ball? Do you think well, he you thought know, it hit the weight well, and he thought it was a, it was a dead ball? Well, that's a great point I, because I guess he figured well now that he did that he's only going to get the third and my pitcher's going to be there. But you don't assume that you're right you got to chase after it if you chase after it, then you stop him at second. To it to the count. I mean he just lazy back there behind the plate right now. Look at all these balls getting away from him. And see he had the whole play in front of him. He sees nobody at home plate as a catcher. You know his mind is probably going well there's nobody there. The pitcher's not there. The catcher's not there. I can score. But the third baseman did a good job of recognizing what was going on. And Blanco, for all the things he's doing wrong in this game, he did a heck of a job leading Ransom. Well, Carlos was uh, maybe a step or two from scoring what would have been an impressive base running play, but instead it turns out to be the second out of the inning. 4 3 on the put out on the Galvis ground ball. We go to the bottom of the second. Sarge has still got 43 minutes before he can enter the pool. So he's up one nothing. Seats still available. Same for Monday. It's a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night at the ballpark. Go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets for Friday and Monday. Don't forget also, if you have tickets for Sunday's game, it is the Fanatic's birthday. That's brought to you by Citizens Bank. And the Fanatic back on April 25th, 1978. <laughs> was unveiled to the crowd. Now here's Blanco. He figured, all right, all right, that's one. And now it starts to bounce away. And well, he, he picked it up right there. And I, he still figures that Ruiz is going to stop at third at the worst. And then the one good thing he does in the play is the way he led Ransom. That was very, that was, that was outstanding. And unfortunately, that's what got the Phillies or Carlos Ruiz would have pulled off a miracle. It would have been a miracle. Oh, yeah. There's Jason Kubel, who's homered in the first two games. And he takes outside. It's 1 0. Oh. So they have been aggressive on the bases, but not smart. In these first couple innings, Google's hit in eight consecutive games. He's reached base safely in the last 12, and he lines that one to right field. It's deep, and Pence goes back to make the catch. It was a sinking line drive, and it made it an easier play for Pence. One out. He got in on him. 
Really kind of jammed him or jammed himself there, and that ball didn't carry. Roof is closed, but it'll still carry here. Hamill's just stretching behind the mound as Cody Ransom was digging in. Ransom swings at the first pitch. Shallow right field or is out. He thought he should give way to Pence. Pence staggered for a moment, but is there to make the catch. And there are two outs. And he's right. He should give way. But well, you, you got a lot he, of guys that don't play together. Right. I think he thought he heard something, but Pence was still coming in. Maybe he did say something. It's hard to communicate on some plays when you don't play together a whole lot. And this is always a right fielder's ball. An infielder wants to be called off it, but you saw or kept going, I got it, I got it, I got it until I guess he recognized it was Pence the second time. So two quick outs. And Paul Goldschmidt. 0 for 4 in yesterday's game with a couple strikeouts. Takes outside. It's 1-0. To the changeup. Cole has one strikeout tonight. Or today, I should say, that gives him 24. And he's inching closer to the top 10 in the National League, which would mean that Vance Worley and Cole Hamels would be in the top 10. <laughs> Last year, the Phillies had three different pitchers who were in the top 10 for most of the year. Round ball at the third baseline. It goes foul. It's two and two. Worley has that uh, 11 strikeout game, which helps him with his totals to get up there. You know, Lee, Halliday, over 200 strikeouts last year. Cole was what, just under? He was just under, yeah. yeah. So there's Vance, who is among the top five in strikeouts in the National League. You figure that Halliday and Lee will both be there eventually. Michael Stutes beside him, they put on the disabled list. Michael Schwimmer has rejoined the club today from Lehigh Valley and is available. In the air to left field. That one's deep and it's going foul. You want to keep throwing him away with slow stuff. Try to come inside with a fastball there. <laughs> he is really mule strong, this guy. Reminds me of Reynolds, who was here before. He you know, I right on the barrel. Two and two the count. Inside, three and two. Came back with a cutter. Yeah. Might set up the change up here with the count three and two. He had a real good change up to him early in the count, and this cries out for three two change up chase inning over. A cutter. Now you're going to get your change up, right? I would think so. I mean, you haven't thinking inside so much. Here we go. And it is a changeup. Swung on and missed. And it's a 1 2 3 second inning for Hamels. Two strikeouts through two for Hamels. He is only allowed one base runner. We go to the third. Hamels' changeup is as good as ever. And the Phillies lead it 1 to nothing.
Log on to phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. Wheels, here's the question. Which player had the first hit and home run in Diamondbacks history? So it was one and the same. In other words, it was a hit and a home run. Uh, no, it was not. So it's two different two different hits. I had no idea on either one. Mm -hmm. We'll find out if you really do have an idea. Well, the answers revealed in the seven. The fans will know, but I'll need a hint. And I have one ready for you. Okay. Cole Hamels leads off the top of the third. Phillies up one nothing. Hamels a lifetime 163 hitter. This year he's two for six. He launches that one to center field. Pollock goes back and makes the catch. Later on in Sports Night, get all the highlights of this ball game, plus a breakdown of the Flyers' Eastern Conference playoff matchup and the latest on the Sixers as they tip off against the Bucks and prepare for the postseason. Get all the news Philly fans need to know on Sports Night tonight at 6 and 11, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Flyers are still waiting for their opponent for the next round of the NHL playoffs. Some first round playoffs still have to be decided. Oh, and one that counts with the air. It's always nice when you sit sitting watching, let the other guys beat themselves up. The air shows bunt one and one. Well, the Panthers have won, but the Rangers are still playing. And the Ottawa Senators. I think I read today that Panthers and New Jersey have a seventh game. I could be wrong. There's a bunt up the first base line. Well, don't take my word for it, but and I thought I read two. that today that New Jersey won last night, forcing a seventh game. You know, you could be right, Wiz. Chance, but I wouldn't go all that. Wouldn't be that. That is correct, Wheels. I misspoke. They won in overtime. I just want to keep keep the hockey straight here now. <laughs> Gosh darn Martin Brodeur. Yeah. A pie two and two to Pierre. Well, I think the article I read they were talking about all the game sevens there are right, right now which. Boston and Washington evidently have one too. Yeah they're going to play tonight. At 730 Eastern time. Right. Jim Jackson be proud of me. Coyotes they won they're their in. first ever right. first round. They're in. And they'll continue on. Pierre slaps at it up the third baseline. Ransom charges. Pierre runs well, and Ransom just gets him. Five three on the put out. Another two outs, and Placido Polanco is the hitter. The Phillies have had their chances to add to their lead against uh, Trevor Cahill. Yeah, as we mentioned, they've run the bases aggressively, but but not wisely. Blanco singled and scored the game's only run. That was in the first. In the Toyota Major League scoreboard, game one of a, a doubleheader between the Rockies and the Pirates. It was a heck of a game. Colorado got just three hits, but they won it two to one. James McDonald had a no hitter into the uh, seventh inning in that game for the Pirates. Troy Tulowitzki at the first hit. But Pedro Alvarez tied it up at one late for Pittsburgh. And then the Rockies won it on the base hit. And they have a scheduled doubleheader today. You know that new rule that you're allowed to have a 26 player? I didn't know that. Didn't know that until Bob Nightingale of USA Today told yeah, us. Yeah, I read it today. If you have a regularly, if you have a, a normal, in other words, not a day night doubleheader. Correct. You may have a 26 player available for that doubleheader. Here's the 3 0 to Polanco, taking all the way. Ball four. So the first walk issued by Cahill, only the second walk the Phillies have uh, drawn in this series. Must have been something in the new basic agreement. I think the big thing is that there's no maneuvering if you need an extra pitcher mm -hmm. or, right. or not from game to game. Yeah, I mean, you would think most teams, when they to take advantage of that rule, would have a pitcher available. As opposed to a position player for an extra man. Right. Here's Victorino who flied to center his first time up. 
And he takes a strike. Hit hard to the right side, flagged down by Hill, and he throws out Victorino, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits, one man left. Some pretty good defense by the Diamondbacks' second baseman as we go to the bottom of the third. fan guide for a chance to win a VIP experience for two this year at the World Series presented by Scott's the official lawn care company of Major League Baseball. Bottom of the third it's one nothing wheels we uh, found the uh, the new rule the new collective bargaining rule yeah. you can actually have the 26 player in a day night double header as long as the day night double header is scheduled for uh, 48 hours. Within 48 hours. Right. So that it, you know, it was a little ambiguous. So that's great. Thanks. N now, you, now we know what that rule is. So if you if you schedule your day night doubleheader two months from now, you can't do it. Right. That's what they're saying. AJ Pollock will lead it off, hitting under 100. He's one for two in the series. He picked up his first major league hit in the series. You learn something every day, don't you? As long as you're open minded. Yep. And the way this game has been played, Oof. you're bound to to learn something. Some goofy stuff in this game today. Going to the count to Pollock. That's awfully close. Cole thought it was a strike. It's one and two. Yeah, he's had some close two strike pitches. This guy's never seen Hamels though, so now is a good time to throw the change up to him. Broke his bat liner right back to the box caught by Hamels one away. He's such a good athlete. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Chevrolet. See your local Chevy dealer. Visit ChevyDealer.com. By AT&T. Rethink possible. And by Toyota. Every new Toyota purchase comes with Toyota care. He did go change up with him there. He figured he would after coming inside. And Pollock hit it right off the end of the bat. Broke the bat in half. And Hamill just reach out and snared it. There's Blanco who waves at a change up and it's 0 and 1. One of the great things about Cole's change up. It can go down and away or it can break over almost like a curveball. Yeah, and that really fools a hitter because you expect a change up from a left hander to fade. There's a guy, Chipper Jones, not Cole Hamill's, but the guy at the plate that Chipper Jones used to call Hank White. <laughs> I used to love what he did that during interviews. Yeah, Hank White, Henry Blanco. I remember the first time he did it. Whoever was doing the interview <laughs> was startled, and he had to think about it. I would have too. Right. I wonder if his given name is Enrique. 
You want to ask him before we get on the plane? Today? No. He's got some tats working too. Yeah, he's the tat man. Today's tat man. He's 40 years old. He's playing with his 19. Mm -hmm. He's always been a very good defensive catcher. Today, uh, you know, struggling a little bit defensively. It's the 2 2 in the air to right center. Playable for Victorino. Pence is there too, but it's Victorino who makes the call and the catch. Two outs. So two away. Here's Trevor Cahill. One for 17 in his career as a hitter over from the American League. Watched him take batting practice yesterday. And he kind of has an inside out swing. Tries to poke everything into right field. Probably called a late swing. A well, pitcher swing. They were joking with him around the cage about, <laughs> about inside outing the ball. Well, look where his front foot is. And he's way off the plate. And they're unlikely to pull balls, these guys. But every once in a while they will. But that front foot is exiting in a hurry. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. He didn't look like a guy that was inside out in the no. ball there. No, he's just going to be a typical pitcher and probably hit it the other way late. Bail action. There you go. Opposite way. Playable for Pence. And he makes the catch at fair territory. One, pitcher. two, three, go the Diamondbacks. Cole Hamels is certainly a pitcher as well. He's allowed one hit so far through three. We go to the fourth, and that guy right there will lead things off for the Phils. at at home.com to find branded products you want at low prices you'll love. Who but WB Mason at home. Now we go to the top of the fourth. It's one nothing Phillies. One run on four hits. Arizona no runs, one hit. No errors so far. Cole Hamels has been pretty good. Seen some strange plays. See that pull out there a couple innings ago. We were visiting with Murph and Sarge, and Sarge was giving his explanation as to to why he couldn't go into the pool because he was having himself some lunch. I did. did your mom used to tell, tell you that? something. It was a little better out there than it is all over the ballpark, and certainly in the uh, our food room. But yeah, I was going to wait. I had a sandwich. Going to wait there 45 minutes to an hour before <laughs> I actually got in. I was going to take my uh, shoes and socks off. Murph told me not to do that just then. But, uh, Good advantage point from there. Vantage point. Awesome. The pool is just awesome. And uh, people were friendly. They're always friendly to you, Sarge. Well, yeah, they are. How could I you mean, not be friendly? How, how could you not be happy sitting out there at the pool? One guy put this on and invited all of his friends. And he said, hey, do whatever you have to do. We're just here to have a good time. Swinging a foul ball. It's 0 2 to Hunter Pence. Well, I know when this place opened and the pool was there around baseball, was like, what? It's not that bad. In the beginning, in walking down, I was thinking to myself, "What is this?" But then, 
once you got over there and you see the food and uh, all the sundresses, all of a sudden now they, it becomes really a ball game. All right, let me ask you something about the, the whole theory of waiting 45 minutes or a half. Oh, you're going back to that? Huh? Yeah, because I don't even tell my kids that anymore because I didn't believe it when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, I, I, I uh, it was something to say. I, <laughs> it was uh, funny. Well, I mean, you know, I have been told that for so long that pretty soon you begin uh, to, to believe, believe it. it. Yeah. To to the cow to pens. Nobody out here in the top of the fourth. Swing and a miss. One out. That is the first strikeout for Cahill. All right, has been some strange base running. Well, Pence was part of it uh, with the, the ball down the left field line that Lance Nix hit, which, by the way, was his 100th career double. Than the play at the plate with Ruiz. Yeah, I think Pence makes that no problem if he doesn't hesitate. Yeah. No, hesitated a little bit. And it just goes to show you got to keep going until that coach holds you up. And I think if he does that, he's able to actually make it in. All right, now. Just a little hesitation. Now your theory's blown up a little bit because Juan was trying to hold him up. Oh, was it? Yeah. Well, let me just tell you this. I mean, my eye's not as good as I, I thought when you're going over there near that pool area. Very difficult seeing hands up or down. Once had some interesting plays already over there around third base. But for me, though, when you're coming around and you see that play, it's in front of you. Absolutely. You're the one that has to be able to uh, to judge that on your speed. Nix with a check swing. Ball blocked by Blanco and his throw to first in time. 2-3 on the putout. Two strikeouts in a row for Cahill. Now he's gone to more off speed pitches. And we Polanco, Blanco, I should say. Backup catcher has been that for a pretty long time. Take a look at it and see how he blocks it. See, he didn't even try and catch it. He just went down, breaking ball in the dirt, just to block it. Snag's nice, thrown over 41% of base stillers throughout his career, which is pretty good. Well, they always say that the that what you're trying to strive for as a catcher statistically is 33 percent. So to be over 33 and be around 40. Oof. Here's the 0 1 to Orr. Chops it foul. It's 0 and 2. Well that's the strongest part of his game calling the game. And defensive player being able to throw throw runners out. He's got a quick release. It's one of the reasons he's able to. Have that percentage. Hits it hard, but fouled on the first baseline. We're getting a little bit of a chance to play on this team. You hit, you play. Big hit, big triple last night for him. If you looking at Charlie, Pete McCannon. That one's off the end of the bat. It skips off the mound. Bloomquist to his left, throws out Orr, and it's a one-two-three inning. For Trevor Cahill. It's his first of the day. We've played three and a half here in Arizona. Final game of this three game series between the Phils and the Defects.
sports stores. Buy Xfinity only from Comcast, the official HD triple play provider of the Phillies. And by Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW for an appointment. Well, the roof is closed here this afternoon. It's pretty comfortable outside. They expected the temperatures to be in the low 90s. There is a threat of rain later on today. And tomorrow there's a threat of rain and hail in this area. So maybe that's one of the reasons why, because of the rain, that they decided to keep the roof closed. Willie Bloomquist swings over the changeup from Hamels to start the fourth. Cole has allowed just one hit so far. It was to Bloomquist to begin the, the first. Yeah, the pitchers would rather have that roof closed because the ball doesn't travel as far. In the air to center field, Victorino is there. One out. When you have it open, that ball seems to carry out of the ballpark a little bit more. It does in Milwaukee Stadium. I remember when the Diamondbacks were in the World Series when they beat the Yankees. That was back in 2001 when Kurt Schilling and Randy Johnson were both pitching here. There were a lot of stories leading up to, to those games how the two of them both wanted the roof closed, but Major League Baseball wanted the elements to be basically the elements, and they wanted it open. Now, it didn't harm the Diamondbacks because they went on to win the championship anyway. Well, I can see that, though, for a pitcher, and especially a pitcher that would throw strikes, and knowing that when it is open, that ball is going to travel a little bit further. Just looking for an advantage. Sometimes they'll open up the panels in Milwaukee, here, even when the roof is closed, but they've decided not to do that today. You see the World Championship logo for the Diamondbacks back in 2001. Ground ball to shortstop Galvis backhands. See how quick his hands are, even at shortstop, and he shows off that that arm for the second out. What a gun! I mean, to go in the hole. I mean, that ball was thrown right on the line. Got a lot of confidence. Check his technique out as he actually backhands it, plants, and then guns the ball. And that ball there will break in your glove the way that he throws it. He feels very comfortable, obviously, at shortstop. 523 games at shortstop. Played one game at third. See his fielding percentage, 971, and you figure that's going to get even better. As his career moves on. Yeah, not only that, you're playing on a lot better fields, and when you are, it makes it easier for the guys that really can read the ground ball, be able to get it over to first base. One ball, no strikes. The count to Justin Upton. There's a fastball, first strike, one and one. All your infielders get ready as that pitch is coming. They always have a little bit of movement, and they do that. That's their mechanism for kind of getting ready for a ball that would hit to the left or to the right. And there you go. That one is hit just to the right of Polanco. And he floats the throw over 5 3 on the putout. So a fly ball and a couple of ground balls to the left side of the infield. Galvis and Polanco, we go to the top of the fifth, fills up one.
Mets will visit for the second time at Citizens Bank Park. It's the start of a three game series on the 8th of May. Louis will be uh, having an Asian Pacific celebration before and during the ball game. Get your tickets by going to Phillies.com. Like the Phillies, the Mets have been hit with some more injuries. As Carlos Ruiz is unable to hold up on the first pitch from Cahill. They'll take on the Marlins later on tonight. Mark Burley against R.A. Dickey. Mike Palfrey's on the DL. So is uh, Jason Bay. Bay has a cracked rib. Palfrey has swelling in his elbow. That cracked rib can give him problems all year long. That almost has to be completely healed. And to the counter, Ruiz. You start swinging the bat, you almost can't breathe when you have something wrong with your rib. Ruiz lines it to left field. Kubel goes back and it sinks over. Yeah, there's one out. And that'll bring Freddie Galvis to the plate. Galvis 0 for 1, grounded out his first time up. Slider. It's another pitcher, I think, offensively, they should be able to handle. He's going to throw extremely hard and around the, the plate with his off speed pitches. Well, that sinker, that sinker is kind of a game changer for him when it's on. I just feel it's always, I mean, if the pitcher's intimidating, a little, a little harder to, to hit. Get that pitch. It's not intimidating, even with good stuff. You know, you're able to have pretty good swings. Throwing that ball 89 to 90. Gets it up there near 95, 96. That's when it becomes intimidating. Well, back a couple years ago in 2010, he won 18 games. He had an earned run average of 2.97, which was fourth in the American League. Alvis hits it in the air to center field. That's pretty well hit, but playable for Pollock. And there are two outs. Well, they play a deep outfield here. This ballpark, and for good reason, we talked about it. The ball has a tendency to carry as he hits that ball all the way to the warning track. Straight away, center field. Hamels hit one out there his first time up. He's 0 for 1. What one the count? Well, all these pitchers, they really believe they can hit. I don't like, them, even though Cole's his setup, you know, looking for his pitch. Pitcher's pitch. That's a tough pitch for anybody. That's that sinker, though, that you're talking about where the ball is in a good spot. And a strikeout for. Trevor Cahill and he's retired seven in a row. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Fills up one nothing.
And Cole Hamels continues his warm up tosses. You know, you can't help but look around this ballpark and see all the former major leaguers who are part of the Arizona Diamondbacks staff. I mean, Kirk Gibson's got a pretty good pedigree with him, doesn't he, Murph? He absolutely does. You know what, Tom? He's one of four people in Major League Baseball that's been the MVP as a player and then also a manager of the year in baseball. So one of four guys to do that. But then you take a look at his staff. And it is equally impressive. You know, there, there's Don Baylor. He also was an MVP and a manager of the year. You got Charles Nagy, a three-time All-Star. Alan Trammell, six-time All-Star and won a, a bunch of gold gloves for the Tigers. Uh, what about Matt Williams? He was an All-Star for five times. And Eric Young as well, a Silver Slugger winner. So pretty impressive lineup just inside that dugout for Kirk Gibson and his staff. Yeah, there's Charles Nagy, who's the pitching coach. Charlie Manuel talks a, a lot about Charles Nagy. Alan Trammell had a chance to stay with the Cubs but decided to come uh, to Arizona to be the bench coach with his buddy and that's the other thing too is all these guys get along very well because they've known each other for so long. Yeah it certainly does help and I'm sure they have a healthy dose of respect for each other both as players and as baseball men because uh, they certainly do know, know the game and you know it's just it's impressive to look down the, the list of you know how many times these guys have been in an all star game. So one ball and two strikes now to Cooper. Alan Tremble. You know, a lot of folks thought that he was going to be the ideal manager for the Detroit Tigers when he was there. And Don Beller, there are folks that thought that even after his uh, time with the Cubs, that he'd have a chance to manage again. Swing and a miss. Kubel's down on strikes. Here's Don. Three strikeouts for Hamill. This guy could hit, couldn't he, sir? Oh, boy. You know, one of the things, too, having the players, uh, you get a respect factor right away. I mean, when you come in the game and you see the stars, just. That they have on the on the team. You don't question any of those guys. And the other thing is that, especially since those guys are really good hitters, they know the ups and downs of a hitter. They've gone through that from Eric Young. They have a variety of different kind of players that have done different things from hitting, from fielding, being able to steal bases, and it did uh, it just helps your ball club. You know, again, you don't get all upset. And if collectively they say this guy can't play, trust me. The guy's not going to be able to play. Cody Ransom takes low. 2 0 the count to Ransom. He fly to right his first time up. You know, when you're looking to at a, at a Matt Williams and they're coming in and you're able to see them, you're looking at, you know, that bubblegum card. That's where you get that respect. And some of the other guys, maybe that aren't all star players. Nice play there by. Next, you get the respect factor like a Jim Leland from paying your dues and have have done it before. You'll get that instant respect from some of uh, from your players. Well, I think a lot of folks uh, always think that guys who've had illustrious playing careers won't always want to be managers or coaches. You know, sometimes it's guys who barely scratch the surface who become the better coaches and managers, but I guess that's not the case here. In Arizona, here's Paul Goldschmidt who struck out his first time up, and he takes a strike. Well, there are times when you have guys that have played, they think they expect sometimes a little bit too much, feel that it is easy. Like Frank Robinson, that was a manager. Uh, he get on the guys a lot because he felt that you know players should be more like him. Well, I mean, this not, there's not a lot of players like Frank Robinson. Like Ted Williams was that way as a manager. You know, some folks thought that it was would be difficult for him to manage because he was such a great hitter. Well, a perfectionist, and you're right about that because it come it becomes easy for those guys. The 0-2 hits sharply to second. Hedor is there, easy play, and the side is retired. So Cole Hamels is humming along. He's allowed just one hit. That was to Willie Bloomquist to start the first. We go to the sixth, and the Phils up over Kirk Epson's team, one nothing.
shining in his first month with the Phils. Freddie Galvis is enjoying his time in the major leagues while filling in for Chase Utley. The shortstop turned second baseman hasn't missed a step on the right side of the diamond. His speed, ability, and his strong arm have not let him or his team down. Number 13 has been good luck for the Phillies, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Now more than ever, we're here for you every step of the way. Well, the Phillies up 1-0. Freddie Galvis making his first major league start at shortstop for the Phil. So all the Phillies fans that have come uh, out to Arizona or come to today's ball game to enjoy this matchup. Get a chance to see uh, Freddie play a little shortstop today. He's been wonderful defensively this entire year. We go to the sixth. Juan Pierre is 0 for 2. Top of the order's up. Phillies are nursing this one run lead. Pierre, 3 for 10 in the series. Into in these innings that you'd like to try and get a few more runs. Well, there you go. That might be an extra base hit. Kubel got to it quickly. Pierre puts the brakes on. Well, he's got a really good arm. I didn't yeah. realize it was as good as it is. And got to the ball quick, and there's what I'm talking about. You don't need that coach that plays right in front of you. So you determine whether or not you're going to go to second base. And he held up, and for good reason. Now watch as he comes around. He's coming around hard now. It's right there in front of him. So he gets back. Go around hard just in case there's a little bobble or whatever. That double starts from home plate. All right. Now the Phillies looking to build this on this one run lead. So the top of the order hopefully can manufacture a run here. Good run every now and then. May not be too bad. I'd like to hit run when you're ahead. I, I, I just feel you keep your club aggressive. Got a pretty good base stealer and Juan Pierre, even though he was thrown out. You now, when you swing, that catcher has to stay back, can't really grab that ball as quick as he would like. Blanco sacrificed in last night's game. Well, I thought, well, it was successful last night. Let me see if I can do it again here. Well, that would not be a bad play. Would I just, you know, the ball hit in the gap or a single should be runners for first and third. Pierre draws another throw. Juan was pretty ticked at himself the other day when he got uh, picked off first. I said, you know, our replay showed that you were safe. He said, yeah, you know what? I might have been safe, but shame on me for putting myself in position to be caught. Yeah, that close. Isn't it? Play right before he just missed. From getting in. Well, that's what he said. He yeah. said it's his fault. He said he should have never, should never have put himself in a, a spot to be picked off, especially when the the play before it was so close. Good point on that. And what you do is you just shorten up a little bit, and he would have been back. But you know, the one thing though about Juan, he'll take the blame, and it'll make him better. Instead of maybe giving excuses that you know, it's just trying to lean out there a little bit more, he knows again that's just not the situation when you want to get picked up. Walco taps it foul. It's one and two. And the good base stealer, and he's been a good one over the years. They try and steal and guess on that breaking ball. They can to be able to still on a pitch that's a little bit slower coming to the plate as opposed to the fast one. Got another half in you. Let's go. Good running count, two and two. Usually three and two. Running like Juan Pierre would be automatic three. And two. Well, he doesn't go here. The ball grounded foul. It remains two balls and two strikes. Mm 
on is tied for 25th all time in stolen bases with Davey Lopes. It's a lot of bases to steal. First of all, you got to be durable. Be able to steal that many bases. Outside, three and two. So you think he's going here? I think it should be automatic. Nobody out. You know, you got a guy that doesn't strike out a lot. You got a decent base runner. Again, the ball hit on the ground. It should be at third base with no problem to go through. Three and two the count. The air goes. And that's ball four. That nearly hit him. So now first and second for the Phillies with nobody out. Now a page from the official playbook of good citizenship brought to you by Citizens Bank. Make an impact in a child's life be by becoming a mentor. Coach Little League, become a tutor, or be a community volunteer. A small influence can make a huge difference for a child. Good banking never takes a day off. Citizens Bank is open all week, including Sundays. Good banking is good citizenship. Charles Nagy's going out to the mound to talk to Trevor Cahill. Runners on first and second. Shane Victorino's catching up with Ed Rapuano, the home plate umpire. I got to tell you, this would be a definitely bunning situation for me. Trying to get a couple of more runs. You know, we've seen Victorino there from that left side has a tendency to really hit those soft kind of fly balls from the right side. However, a little bit different. He's got more power from that right side. But this would be a good situation to butt, especially with him from that left side. He's got that speed to get to first base, putting pressure on that third baseman. But you got to make sure. He feels that ball. Well, Breslow's warming up at the pen, so you have no problems with a number three hitter doing it, particularly in a one nothing game. Well, particularly with the way that the lineup has been shuffled around, the, uh, the way that Charlie's been doing it. So this is not your typical third hitter. Well, Victorino doesn't square. He takes a strike, and it's 0-1. I mean, Chase Utley up there and swinging the way that he's capable? Of course not. You know, you're going to go on and let him swing, and not only that, he has a tendency to pull the ball a little bit more than Victorino. Victorino does pull it but foul. That's why you do you like I mean so many players and they talk about it really like playing for Charlie because very seldom does he take the bat out of your hands. He lets them go up and just about dictate and do what they want to do. You know, at the plate, sure, he'll make them but every now and then. But, you know, going into the sixth inning again for me, this is a perfect situation. But he lets him go on and hit. And it's up to uh, it's up to him. Now, is his thinking that Victorino could pull it through the hole on the right side or that he wants a big inning? Is that why he doesn't do well, it? Well, I would think that he's looking for the big inning. And therefore, you're talking a base hit, runner in, and then a runner on, on first and third. You want to move him, however. Well, he does move him, so this is kind of like a bunt because Hill. Oh, is he out or safe? He's out because Hill's only play was to first, but Goldschmidt ventured a little too far away. So that'll be four three awkwardly on the put out, and the Phillies have second and third with one out. Well, you're right about that. And there's that good speed with Victorino, and he does get him. Well, with that speed, you just put a lot of pressure. Up. On the opposition, and the other way too, and, and and bunting that ball, you end up saving your average a little bit, you know. Well, I mean, that's it's all about that. You save your average. More importantly, you're getting the runners over. Hunter Pence, a wave and a miss. Well, I just want to tell you that you sounded exactly like a a number three. Or a number four or number five hitter right there. Well, I mean, I didn't bunt a lot, but there were times <laughs> when you had to, you know, you had to bunt. And let me tell you, when you're not hitting the ball well, you welcome that bunt side from the third base coach. That ball gets away from Blanco. Here comes Pierre. He's going to score. And it's 2 nothing Phillies. That was a ball in the dirt. Blanco could not keep it around the plate. And you got great speed at third. And that'll be a wild pitch charged to Trevor Cahill. That's his second of the year. Anticipating that ball going to be in the dirt. 
Didn't go very far, but Blanco knew he had no chance. That's why he didn't throw it. Take a look at it. That's that hard sinker. That ball hits the dirt or hits the plate, bounces back, and then Pierre's right away. Not even a throw at home plate. Good base run. So now the infield's in. It's two and one to Pence. By the way, it's the, the third wild pitch for Cahill, the second one today. So now Pierre crosses the plate. Block goes at third. And Pence has a chance to drive in another one. And a ground ball through the hole on the left side of base hit. Here comes Polanco. He's going to stroll home. RBI single for Hunter Pence. Three nothing Phillies. Well, he's a guy that some kind of way seems to be able to drive in runs. He's done that throughout his young career. And that's how you end up driving in 100 runs by doing just that. Getting that runner in from third base. Now how about this in the first inning as it goes right through the left side. No, not great mechanics, but hit right in the right spot. A breaking ball. Give him credit as he does the same thing. Now that's hitting as he almost one hands that ball going into left field. Saw that ball breaking away. Had that mind to really kind of reach out to drive it in the home. Well, he's the last hitter for Trevor Cahill. His afternoon is complete. He's allowed three runs so far. Pence's response is responsibility. Over at first, we've got a pitching change. It's brought to you by AT&T. It's an AT&T call to the bullpen here in the sixth. Fans, the 10 packages offer a unique opportunity to attend some of the most popular games of the season, like the Red Sox games. Package includes a pregame tailgate in the Phillies party tent with music, buffet menu, beer, and soft drinks, plus a ticket to one of the several high demand Phillies games. Get your tickets by going to phillies.com slash tailgate. So Breslow will take over here in the top of the sixth. And instead of facing Lance Nix, he's going to face Ty Wigginton. See Breslow's numbers. This is his eighth ball game. He has not allowed an earned run. He has an inherited runner aboard. So Wigginton will pinch hit for Knicks. So instead of lefty on lefty, the Phillies have the right handed batter up. You know, I kind of like that move and being able to. Continue to give uh, Ty Wigginson some at bats against these type of pitchers. Well, he hits well here and it continues and he extends his hitting streak to 11 consecutive games with that pinch base hit. And the Phillies have first and second with one out. Let's check this out and see where the location is on that. Stays right on it. Not up. Bad pitch at all, but this guy is just so strong that he's able to hit those line drives. Well, Trevor Cahill, his line is not complete just yet because Pence, who's at second, is his responsibility. Here's Pedor, 0 for 2 today. 
So we get a miss. So and one. Of late movement on that pitch, and it's foul tipped by Orr. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, Jose Altuve had four hits in an RBI, and the Astros edged the Brewers 7 5. They combined for 24 hits in that game. Outside, one and two. This is a huge game if they can pull this one out. Let's get in the habit of winning the series. That's what they have to get back to. And that two outs is or is struck out. Get in, get in the habit of winning series and finish this road trip at a five and five record. And obviously they've done better, but it would not be bad coming on the West Coast. Well, their better ball is going to be playing later on during the, the season. And hopefully, you know, this is the, the bad part of the season that it happened in the beginning. So they're going to get hot as a club before it's all over with. Carlos takes it side, 1 0. You win multiple games when you have several guys hot in the lineup. Have scored two. They'd love to get another one with Pence over at second. Uh, two outs here in the sixth. It's got a decent lead at second base. Nobody around. And a liner to right center field. He's going to be able to score. He's around third, heading to the play. Ruiz will get another RBI. Wigginson trying to get the third, and he does, and the ball gets away. Backed up by Breslow, 4 0 Phillies. This has turned out to be a heck of an inning for the Phillies. Well, let me tell you, excellent hitting there by Ruiz. More so, excellent base running by Pence, knowing exactly where the center fielder was. That ball hit, he was off to the races. Wigginton doing the same thing. Check this out here as the line drive goes right in to right center there. You can see him coming up with a throw pence. He's off and running, not even looking at it. Sammy bringing him all the way as Wigginton goes into third base. Runners on first and third. That's what you like, setting up those kind of runners there on the corner. Even though it's two outs, still pressure that Henry Blanco got to block all those balls. And he hasn't been uh, as comfortable today as we've normally seen from him. There have been a couple of wild pitches. And a couple of other drops by Blanco. Well, the four runs are charged to the line of Cahill, whose line is complete now. And it's 2 0 oh to Galvis. Hale's going to walk away from this thinking I didn't pitch that badly, but all of a sudden I'm down 4 0. And he didn't. I mean, it's just, you know, on the wrong end. You get a hit here, there. And scoring in the first inning, again, always helps your pitcher. Three and one out of Galvis. In the driver's seat, and then you can look for whatever pitch you want. Usually they come right at him. He 
He might have been a little early on that. He had a good swing, and you can tell because he fouled that ball straight back. Let's see if he comes at him with another fastball, or maybe try and throw the breaking ball. Usually, pitchers will do that with a pitcher in the on deck circle, especially with two outs. But Galvis, being a young player, see whether or not he'll. Come right at him with the fastball. Runner goes from first. There's ball four, and Hamels will get a chance to bat. The Phillies have batted around here in the sixth. Well, tomorrow night, Comcast Sportsnet is your best source for total Eagles draft coverage. Derek Gunn is live with the latest news from the Novacare Complex, and our panel of experts break down the first day of draft picks. Draft Day 2012, Day One, presented by CarSense, live Thursday night at 6:30 and 11:30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Hamels is the hitter, and he fouls it away. Some wheelings and dealings already going on with the Eagles. They've traded Asante Samuel to the Atlanta Falcons. That might open up some some space for LaShawn McCoy. Also might change what they're looking for in the draft as the day moves on. The second day moves on. That pitch is outside. It's one and one. Might be a little old school Troy Vincent jersey right there, Sarge. Bases are loaded for Hamels. One ball, one strike. Two and one. And pressure's always on the pitcher, I feel. With the bases loaded, he's the one that has to throw the strike and a quality strike. Oh boy, how about this? What a spot for Hamels. Does he take here? I'm sure he's going to take that all the way. Ziegler's warming up. Brad Ziegler. No, I mean, you see him throwing that way. Maybe he's a little bit wild. This is going to be another fastball. And Hamels oh. breaks his bat, loops it towards center, and it drops in for a base hit. One run scores. Here comes Ruiz. He'll score a two run single for Hamels. Six nothing Phillies. Well, we talked about that before. Most managers will go on and give him a take. Charlie believes in his pitchers. Good swing, however, by Hamels. I mean, good hitting position. Didn't hit that ball well, but hit it well enough. As he gets two RBIs, look at him head down and hitting against that front foot. Look how his head went right down there. Good release right there. That's cut. That's two RBI for him. And another hit. Nice going as he tacks on some for himself. There's a strike to Pierre. Well, that, that pitcher's hitters challenge, which was won last year by Hamels, that'll help his score this year. It also helps to score the game. Pierre started this rally with a leadoff single here in the sixth. Grounds that one to second. That should do it for the inning. Four three on the putout, but a damaging inning. The Phils send ten men to the plate. They scored five runs. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and Cole Hamels and the Phils have a six nothing lead.
can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy McDonald's. Get a large sweet tea for $1. And buy Dodge. Visit Dodge.com for your local dealer today. The Phillies are up 6 nothing in this pivotal final game of this series and of this road trip. Cole Hamels has retired 14 straight batters since he allowed the leadoff double to start the ball game to Willie Bloomquist. It's been a very impressive run for him. By the way, Sarge, before we let you go, after the sixth inning, we want to wish a happy 91st birthday to Jim Nacito. Yeah. yeah, happy birthday, Jim. Jim's daughter, Debbie, is a big part of the Phillies front office. So happy birthday, Jim. And as a present to you, we give you a 6 nothing lead. Well, he'll like that. Sure, Debbie, I like that too. One and one the count. AJ Pollock, Henry Blanco, the pitcher spot. Those are the scheduled hitters against Hamels. He's had uh, some good control today. All day long. Well, gee, all these rounds, it's got to feel like Christmas in April here for him. Not used to getting all these rounds here lately. Good change up. So, if you just saw that change up from Hamels, how about this year? 22% of the pitches that Cole throws is that cutter. Yep. Well, if it's in that good spot, I mean, and he has really faith in that. That's more so the four seamer as opposed to the two seamer. That ball was straight with no cut on it. But that's an effective pitch there to be able to get in on right handed batters. A liner toward right center. Victorino is there and reaches up at the last moment to make the catch. Great job. Ball hit on the side of it makes it an easy play as opposed to being right at him. Well, that's what we talk about when you like that ball down some because if it's up a little bit more damage, that ball's down, even though he hit it well, was more of a line drive. Nice play, too, by Victorino. First pitch to Blanco is a ball, so it's 1 0. Balls popped up over toward first. Wiggins, who stayed in the ball game to play first after pinch hitting, records his second out. Monday, May 14th at 7:05, the Phillies will begin a two-game series, real quick one, against the Houston Astros. And all fans coming to the ballpark that night will receive this new cap featuring the Liberty Bell. It's compliments of the folks at Teva Respiratory. It's Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night. Tickets are available by going to Phillies.com. Ryan Roberts, the batter, no pinch hit for the Diamondbacks. Got a hit in last night's game, and he takes a strike. Brad Ziegler will be the next pitcher for the Diamondbacks. He continues to warm in their pen. Popped him up. Right side of the infield. Wigginton is straddling the line. Now in fair territory, puts it away, and the success continues. For Cole Hamels. He allowed a leadoff double to Willie Bloomquist and hasn't allowed a base runner since. He has faced the minimum as we've gone to the seventh.
First inning, Hunter Pence hits this ball towards a hole, and Ransom kind of gave up on it. Phillies took a one to nothing lead there. Polanco scored. Then the sixth inning, and he threw a crooked number up there. Once again, Hunter Pence threw a drawn in infield. Once again, Polanco scores. And Hunter Pence has knocked in a couple. And Cole Hamels, he capped off the inning. Phillies batted around plus one, a broken bat, bases loaded, single to center, two more runs scored. Cole Hamels right now with a six to nothing lead, and he has pitched really, really well. To say the least, gave up a leadoff double to Willie Bloomquist, and that's been it so far. Trevor Cahill, the Phillies got to him, and also to the bullpen, the third pitcher of the game will come in here for the Diamondbacks. It's side winding right hander Brad Ziegler. And his first batter is Placido Polanco, and he delivers a strike, and it's 0-1. Well, how about the the five-run sixth inning for the Phillies? As we take a look at Ziegler, and he gets ready to deliver to the plate to Polanco. Chopper foul. It's 0-2. Phillies with that five-run sixth inning now take the lead in Major League Baseball for the most. Innings of five runs or more. <laughs> well, you you, you kind of knew that, right? It's the fourth time they've done it this year. Well, they had a few in this series. There's a soft liner to left. Kubel comes in. He can't make that catch. Last night he made a sliding grab that was called a hit. That was actually a catch. That one was pretty clean. Watching Cole Hamels do what he's doing right, right now reminds me of a game. In the 50s, when Robin Roberts pitched against the Cincinnati Reds and Bobby Adams led off the game with a home run, he pitched 27 up, 27 down after that. That's amazing. Well, in today's game, he allows the leadoff double, yeah. but that guy gets caught stealing, right. so he's faced the minimum. I think it was, I can't remember what year it was, but somewhere in the 50s, and it's a pretty remarkable game, even for Robbie. And Robin never pitched a no hitter either. Oh, and won the count. You know, Inside, Victor, one and one. Victorino, in my opinion, had the biggest at bat in that inning. The ground ball. When he just, you know, he, he fought, yeah, he rolled over a little off speed pitch, but he advanced both runners and the pass ball, and they got to bring the infield in. And it turned into a big inning because you made a you made a good out. In that case, by getting the ball to the right side and the advanced two runner. He didn't mean to do that, but it, you know, by thinking the right way and pulling the ball. You know, we thought there was a chance he would sacrifice, even though he's the three hitter. But Sarge said, uh, Sarge said, well, if he doesn't, Charlie's looking for the big inning and trust that he's able to get it to the right side. Yeah, and I think he thinks Victorino in that three hole, you know, can drive the ball, even though he's struggling left handed. Shane's really strong from both sides of the play, and I think he's thinking, I want more out of it. But if he makes it out to the right side, maybe we can get something out of it. And he did pull a ball really hard to the right side. What on the 0-1? Down to the count, one ball and two strikes. Roller to the right side. Hill dives. He has it from his knees. Throws out Victorino. That's twice he's done that to him. Taking hits away from him. The one gone and Pence is the batter. But again, and we'll see what happens. That can turn out to be a good out for you right here because he has no play at, at second base. He's just thinking about getting the out right there and robs Victorino twice on plays to his left. Well, here's a guy that's had himself a good day, and that's Hunter Pence. He's two for three with two runs batted in. He's 11 runs batted in now. Found that hole on the left side. Amazing how far they play the first baseman off the line on Hunter Pence. And they just look at this. Look at this right, right here. I don't I'm think I've ever seen anybody do that before. Yeah, and they were doing that when they had the infield in uh, when he was up last time. Goldschmidt was way over there. They just don't think he's going to slap a ball down the first base line. They feel that he's going to pull everything, so they're taking as much away as they can. One ball, one strike to count. It was announced today that Hunter and his foundation are hosting a, their first event in Philadelphia, the Let's Go Eat Food and Fun Festival. It will take place on May 31st. 
will benefit the Make a Wish Foundations in Philadelphia, the Susquehanna Valley, Phil Abundance, and Phillies Charities. Two and one the count. Tried to check. He went around. It's two and two. Well, his out, his hits, I should say, his outfield hits. Eight, six, and four. I'm surprised that he's pulled more. No, and that's why they're playing him the way they are. And the way he opens up and, and, and swings as hard as he does, balls the right field are more or less an accident with him. Right center? No, not so much because he can drive a ball out there, but a ball down the line. They're just going to play percentage. Boy, that was a tough pitch. That thing was saucering up there and it finally broke over the plate. And Pence goes down looking for the second out. Well, this guy's the ultimate Frisbee flinger. Monday, May 21st, the Phillies and the Washington Nationals will face off for the first time in Philadelphia. The Phillies will be there. Uh, not you know they'll be there next week as they see them for the first time but Monday May 21st is the beginning of a three game set all three games are at 705 and includes a Hatfield dollar dog night go to Phillies.com get your tickets for that series as it turns out it's going to be a big one not only now but it looks like for the rest of the year I'm really going to be interested to see what the atmosphere is there because it's been such a Phillies home game for the last for you know since they've been I down there I still think it's going to be soon well it, it you know it, I, that's why I'm saying I like to see what it's going to be like yeah. because they're going to try and limit whatever they could do the groups. Yeah, the number of Phillies fans that can attend. Plus, you would wonder if they have enthusiasm now from their own fans. I think they have more, but watching one of their games the other day, it it doesn't look like it's that everybody has bought into it no. yet. Well, yeah, exactly, because it's April and it's still building. They're averaging 24,000 at home. Uh, you know, and when the Phillies are there, obviously the crowds are going to be a lot bigger. Absolutely. And the Phillies have an afternoon game there, a Saturday afternoon and a Sunday night game. Spending the weekend in DC. DC, yep. The fans are here, they're everywhere. Going to the count to Wigginton. At a pinch single his last time up as a pinch hitter for Lance Nix. I can make right handed hitters a little uncomfortable. And throw real hard, but it has to be tough to pick him up. And the first move has to be can't help it. You just open up. Left handers a lot different. He stayed in there. That was a tough pitch to stay in with. He recognized it was a slider. And that's the one he'll get hurt on if he gets hurt by a right hander because he made a mistake. He threw that frisbee, but watch where it is. It's in here instead of out here. And that's the one that they can bang, a right hand hitter, because they're wide open. The one away, when they're wide open like that, they can't reach it. Like that. Miss. Yeah. Wigginton goes down swinging for the final out. Back to back strikeouts for Ziegler. Phillies uh, leave one in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the seven. Time to stretch here at Chase Field and the Phillies on top.
Twins to nothing. As Willie Bloomquist will lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh. Cole Hamels has faced the minimum. Now he's faced the minimum, but he's allowed a hit because Bloomquist began the first with a double to left center and then was caught stealing as he wandered off the second base bag. First pitch here is a fastball and it's 0 and 1. Now think about think back to that at bat. We thought yeah. that Hamels had him struck out once, and Close. then there was a foul tip that Ruiz didn't hang on to. Right. Could be talking perfect game. Talking at this a perfect point. game, right? And he's been that good today too. He, he's not throwing his curveball much, if at all. He's throwing his fastball, slide, our fastball cutter, and change up. But the difference between this game and and in San Diego the other day, Thomas, he's ahead of the hitter, no question. And he was not being, he didn't, he wasn't able to do that the other day because he didn't have fastball command in that game. Today he does. Swing and a miss, and he got him with a cutter. That's the fourth strikeout for Hamels. He's now retired 18 in a row. Wheels, it's now time for the Dodge Stump the Fans Trivia Quiz answer. One more time, we'll give you the question. Which player has the first hit and first home run in D backs history? And one more time, I don't know. So if you would be so oh, here we go. <laughs> Get the buzzer right away. If you would be so kind as to possibly throw a hint. Well, uh, this is going to give it away, but he played for the Phillies. Oh, the, hey, one guy did both. Yeah. And he played for the Phillies. Yep. To a no the count to Aaron Hill. Well, I, I'm being. You're trying to buy yourself I'm some more time. Being mocked in the truck right now, but. Oh, um. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I may have had enough time. <laughs> Two and one the count. Did he did he come to the Phillies in the shilling deal? He did. Travis Lee? Travis Lee is correct. <laughs> Thanks for the time. And a 9 2 loss to the Rockies. Two and one the count to Aaron Hill. And it's three and one. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize <laughs> back. Thanks for playing Dodge Stump. There's a time limit involved. Huh? Well. Vicente Padilla was in that deal. Omar Dahl, and there goes the stretch of consecutive batters retiring. Yeah, 18 straight retired by Hamels. And for the first time since the first inning, he'll work from the stretch. I'm going to have to remind him. He's mad at himself. Yeah. You know, he's so competitive, and he made a pitcher, you know, that he, he didn't put it right where he wanted to, and he got. Gave up a hit. Here's Justin Upton is 0 for 2. He struck out. He grounded out. As Hill leads off first. One ball and no strikes. Pitch count wise, Hamels is still at a very comfortable number. It's 76 pitches. Very comfortable considering it's the seventh inning with one out. Another base hit. Victorino will get to it. Runner stops at second. So back to back singles for the Diamondbacks. A little bit careful in this place. Being throw runs up in a hurry the way the Phillies have. Because the ball flies. You know, he gets a man on, somebody pops one, then he got a game. Rich Duby knows that Hamels is just at 77 pitches. Nobody even stirring in the Phillies bullpen just yet. Two pitches, both of them up in the zone in this setting. Uh, for hits. Lucas swung and missed it. A pitch was up, but it was out of the zone. And Rapuano signaling to his other umpires. And a change up for a strike. It's 0 1. Hamels this year is among the leaders in first pitch strikes. 82% of the time he'll throw a first pitch strike. Well, I wonder what he was in that San Diego game. It didn't seem like he was able to do that.
dirt and it's one to know so he's going to go out to the mound with a new baseball. And that's the way you want to approach Cody Ransom when he was with the Phillies he really struggled with left handers that had change ups. So they throw him a change up there and hope he would swing maybe roll it over. Hamels now allowed four hits overall he had allowed just one before this inning started. Two and a half. Boom, another one to miss with it. David Hurd is stretching out his hands. Mick Bill Myers getting his uh, shin guards on. Yeah, it didn't look like they were going to have to get anybody up. That's a good one right there. Another change up, and it's two and one. Well, that, one that one came in. Michael Schwimmer, who just arrived from AAA, is about to start warming up. Well, this part of the game in the seventh inning, they need a fresh arm, and that's why Schwimmer's here. Goldschmidt's on deck. Well, he's also have Antonio Bastardo warming up. Alongside of Schwimmer. They have three left handed moves off their bench today. And he went. Didn't matter. Rapuano called it a strike anyway. You can read his lips there. He said called. Rapuano, yeah. He doesn't think it was a strike. They can't run here. You wouldn't think down by five runs, but you never know. Here they go. It would be cool that they'd be worried about, but he's not being held on. They don't go, and there's ball four. So the bases are loaded. First jam of the day for Hamels. It's kind of got to come out of nowhere as Rich Doobie's coming out to the mound. There's still one out. One run is in. The bases are loaded. Yeah, he struck out the first batter of the inning to keep that consecutive out streak alive. And then all of a sudden, single, single, single walk. See how good he's been. He's been mowing them down all afternoon as Cole Hamels. Basically with change up cutter and fastball. He hasn't used his curveball. These are change ups. That was a broken bat right there, a little liner that he picked. Another change up. Probably was a high cut fastball, I think, that he struck Lindquist out on to start this inning. Well, as Doobie goes out to the mound, the bullpen continues to fire. Paul Goldschmidt, 0 for 2. They've gotten him swinging on strikes and they got him to ground out to second. This is one of those scary guys now because he can hit him a long way, but he can also strike him out or get him to hit him with a double play. Well, that's what the hope right now is either one of those two, a strikeout or a double play. Ooh, he was swinging for Tucson right there. And it's 0 1. Yeah, he got something off speed there and he was swinging fastball. Yep. And it's 0 2. Well, you don't know whether this guy guesses or not with two strikes, but they really have him set up to throw change up now away unless they want to come back inside one more time. Well, that's how they got the strikeout his first time up. They went inside, missed there, and then went outside with the change up. They're coming in. Ground ball towards shortstop. Galvis has it. There's one. Or drop the ball. They're going to say everybody's safe. That wasn't on the exchange. He just dropped the ball, and it's a 6-2 game. Oh, that's a huge error right there because all he wants an out. We've been talking about that. You have a big lead. Try not to do too much. 
Didn't need the double play, even though it would have been perfect because you're out of the inning. Well, fielder's choice, an RBI, E4. Yeah, that's a good call, too. Galvis gives him a, you know, a good enough toss, certainly, but he never catches that ball. And it's not on the exchange. You know, he's not, he's on the bag, too, and he's lucky he didn't get blown up and hurt. Here's A.J. Pollock with one out. All of a sudden, this nice, comfortable lead, comfortable pitch count. Everything's blowing up in this inning. Yeah, he's at uh, 89 pitches now. And he's just trying to get himself out of the seven. One ball, one strike to count. Back toward the middle. A one hopper. That should be two. Galvez gets the first, and they get the second. Four, six, three, double play, and it gets Hamels out of the jam. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Freddy Galvez got away from the base runner and got just enough on that throw to get A.J. Pollock. Two runs in the inning on three hits. The defense left the fills for a moment, but then came right on back as we go to the eighth. We're for Holmes. Talk to us today about how we can help guide you to the loan that's right for you. And buy Nissan. Get to a Nissan dealer for great deals on innovation you can count on. Innovation for all. Well, a collective sigh as the seventh inning came to a close. The Phillies allowed two runs. They lead it 6 2. It does not look like Cole Hamels is planning on leaving this ball game as we go to the eighth. Why not? He's got a couple of RBIs. Might want to let him hit. <laughs> David Hernandez is the new pitcher for the Diamondbacks. 0 and 1, a 3.24 earned run average. This guy can fire. Oh, yeah. He's, got, he's a strikeout pitcher. And Pete Orr will lead it off. And Orr fouls the first fastball back. Good job by Hamels in that inning. Just keep throwing strikes. Uh, you know, they don't make the double play on the first one, they, they do make the double play on the second one. He'd already walked one batter, and that's what he's trying to get away from. Bear down and get after him, and he did. Pollock got down the line on that last Yeah, he did. That was closer than it should have been. A guy hitting from the right side of the plate. Two and one the count to Orr. Followed up at 93 mile an hour fastball with two breaking pitches at 79. Or lifts it to shallow left. Kubel, and he sees it all the way. The first down. 
I want to add to your Phillies game experience, pregame party areas for groups of 20 or more, perfect for entertaining family, friends, or business associates. There are a variety of party areas to choose from. For more information, call 215 463 5000 and ask about the pregame parties at Citizens Bank Park, or as always, you can go to Phillies.com. So one away, Carlos Ruiz, the hitter. That ball going to the press box. Yeah, he's right near where Ruben Amaro and Greg Castriotta are sitting, but I think it was on the first level. Who would have caught it? Well, either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you had a choice to choose, which one would have Ruben. caught it? I think Greg would have caught it, but in a different way. It would have caught him. He needed that, I hope, is protect his computer. So we got a miss. One and two to Ruiz. Okay, he's got a pretty good breaking ball, too. That it say he throws fastball, curveball, change up. And uh, you know, off a 96 fastball, that's a tough pitch, especially for a right-handed hitter. Carlos has had a good day. He's two for three with an RBI. And they get three for four. That was a breaking pitch, and he stayed with it. So three hits today for Carlos Ruiz. Hey, a reminder that if you go to phillybroadcasters.org and you're a rising junior or senior in one of the uh, the Philadelphia area colleges or universities you can qualify for the Callis Award. It's an award that we as the broadcasters for the Phillies designed several years ago and uh, it's a fifteen hundred dollar scholarship for folks that are interested in getting into broadcasting to follow in the footsteps of the great HK Again, go to phillybroadcasters.org to fill out the application. The deadline is the end of the month of April and we're going to going to uh, choose the winner by the 15th of May. So it's a pretty easy application. You can go to the website, fill it out, and send it in. You can even email it to us. Oh, and won the count to Freddie Galvis with a runner at first. Swing and a miss. It's 0 2. We've given out two scholarships so far. Josh Schreger, who works with us at the, at the Phillies games at home, received the first one. He's from Temple University. Foul ball and remains 0 and 2. And Dan Kub, who also is from Temple University, won the award. Luis Gonzalez did not qualify for the <laughs> award. The player he was. Well, I'm sure if he filled it out, we'd give him a special consideration. I think he won the, uh, the race today. It's, oh, did he? I think so. Well, you we know that Mark Grace uh, will never. Win the race. Yeah, it that's the legends race that they have here. It's a spinoff of the president's right. race down in D.C. Gracie has a day off today. They're not televising. Neither he than nor Darren Sutton are here today. At least they're not up here. Going to the count to Galvis. And he's down on strikes. He went after a high fastball. Two outs here in the eighth. Probably looks pretty good coming out of his hand, but hey, no way you're going to catch up with it. <laughs> Amels is one for three with two runs batted in today. One of the Phillies' 11 hits. How about Charlie letting him swing three and one? Yeah. Probably figured he was going to get a fastball and said, see what you can do. Yeah. Broke his bat and flared it right into center. Cole helps himself in so many ways. He's such a good fielder. Takes care of his position out there, and uh, he can swing the bat. Probably the one thing he would like to improve, and uh, you know he's one of those guys that likes to improve on everything is holding runners on, because you can run on him a little bit. He held up on the 94, and it's two and one. Guys in the bullpen have obviously sat down. Hamels will pitch the eighth, at least start the eighth with Phillies. And they feel good about him starting the eighth. They may have somebody up as the inning begins. 
I think it's safe to say that could be calls. Balls and Papelbon have not gotten a whole lot of work on this road trip. I mean, they've gotten work, but it's been sporadic. Yeah, day off tomorrow. Rich can just sit back now and watch him. Yeah, he's got a master plan right now where he wants to go in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Called strike three, a breaking pitch, and it was a dandy from Hernandez. So the Phillies get a base runner. No runs, one hit, one man left. Stay with us, everybody. We go to the bottom of the eighth with the Phillies on top, 6-2. Insurance. Complete recap of what's going on here with the Phils on this road trip as they wind it down and try to get to five and five, and then the off day tomorrow, and of course the game on Friday against the Cubs. Again, it's Phillies post game live. It's presented by Cure Auto Insurance. Phillies up six two. Bottom of the eighth inning. Freddie Galvis shifts over from short to second, and Jimmy Rollins into the ball game to play shortstop. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team in order. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Cole Hamels has made uh, has helped make a lot of contributions today. Phillies baseball is brought to you by the Xfinity Triple Play, your complete lineup for digital TV, high-speed internet, and home phone. And there you go. The bullpen is warming behind Hamels, Qualls, and Bastardo. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2. They huh? mentioned they have three left-handed moves. Montero, Parr, and Overbay, and one of them is in the on deck circle. Geraldo Parr. And Gibson's team won game one. The Phillies are trying to take the last two of the series. And a breaking ball called strike three. Roll that out, eh? He hasn't thrown a whole lot of hooks today. Kind of a delayed call from Ed Rapuano. It seemed like Blanco knew it and Ruiz knew it. It's a really good curveball. I mean, that's a strike. And he's just giving it a little little emphasis there because like you said they all knew that was a strike. I think Hamels is calling for Chooks to come out. Either that or he's calling to let him know that his, uh, his shin guards the strap popped up. He was definitely yelling Chooks. Here's Gerardo Parra the pinch hitter. Doesn't matter where we go, everybody else choose. Yeah, even his teammates are yelling, Chooch. Want to know the count to Parra. He's had a good start to the year. Par is at 260 with two home runs and eight runs batted in. Out of nowhere, this young man won the gold glove last year for his play in left field. This guy's a good player. I thought it was interesting the other day when Kirk Gibson said he's uh, he's developing. Mm -hmm. 
but I think to the point where they think he's a power guy in a small body, but out of necessity, he's been the leadoff hitter for for Kirk Gibson. Those odds. Way out in front, and it's two and two. Now look at this shot. Look at this. It's like it's pure. Oh man, what? That's scary. It's good stuff. That's an intense man right there. Sure is. So if your name Gibson, you're intense. <laughs> Think of who Gibson, Bob Gibson, and that guy. They're both about as intense as you can get. Two outs and another strikeout. I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to get him mad. So we go back to the top of the order for the Diamondbacks. Willie Bloomquist started the uh, bottom of the first with a double. And then fly to center and struck out. He was the 18th consecutive batter retired by Hamels at one point in this game. Trying to settle down in this inning and get it back. He just threw another curveball there. I really hadn't been throwing that pitch, and now all of a sudden he's gone to it. A little bit here late in the game. Got it over. They're going, where'd that come from? You've been good enough without it. And now he throws a fastball up and away. One and one the count. Like Lee does that a lot of games. He'll be going along, not throwing his curveball, and all of a sudden here it comes. Strike out, strike out. There's a change up and it's one and two. Just over 100 pitches, 103. He might be able to finish the game if he gets a Bloomquist. Here's the one two pitch. Ground ball foul. Through another curve ball. Yeah. All of a sudden it's like, eh, well, let's try this a little bit. You know, they're getting on to me last inning and what I've been doing so far, but I still have this. I haven't shown him that much. It's one of the reasons why he's become such a complete pitcher is that he's able to throw so many pitches for strikes. Must be nice. See the change up grip there. Fast worker like all their starters are. See many foul balls, which is one of the reasons why his pitch count has been okay. Yeah, and after all that off-speed stuff he's been flipping up there, he throws a 93 fastball, and the hitter's going to be late, even though you're in a, you know, more or less a hitter's count of 2-2. Two -two. Well, here we go. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch, another foul ball. Came back with another fastball. Talked about Hamels being uh, among the leaders in first pitch strikes. He's also among the leaders in swings and misses. Mm -hmm. Ninth in baseball. There you go, another one. A change up, and he's just struck out the side. Seven strikeouts for Hamels. He's through eight. What a fantastic outing for the Phillies left hander. He was throwing a lot of curveballs, but came back with his money pitch, the change up, to take us to the ninth.
Pat on the back for Cole Hamels, a shake of his hand. Roy Halladay comes over as well as Rich Doobie's chatting with him. So Cole is probably done after eight innings of work. Phillies do have bullpen action going as we start the top of the ninth. It's uh, Papelbon who is loosening up. That's not a surprise since he's worked sporadically with the off day tomorrow. Yeah, it's not going to be a safe situation. But, uh, you know, they, they look like they do want to get him into the game as Joe Martinez just up from the minor leagues comes in for the D-backs. Uh, you know, get Papelbon in the game. You say give him some work, day off. Well, Martinez, who was just called up yesterday, along with Mike Zagurski. Zagurski pitched in last night's ball game. This is the first appearance this year for Martinez. There's Papelbon. Martinez was 0-1 with a 4.42 earned run average down in AAA Reno, I should say, up in AAA Reno. Right. Cole had that little hiccup in the seventh inning and then came out in the eighth and was dominant again. Juan Pierre, another base hit. It's his second one of the game. He's two for five this afternoon. Just keeps on hitting. Yeah, and that's why they keep leading him off. So maybe the Phillies can get some insurance here with Placido Polanco. Martinez, I don't know if people recall, was originally with the San Francisco Giants. And back a couple of years ago, he was hit with a line drive off the bat of Mike Cameron. And he missed uh, most of the year and eventually came back. It was a horrific play. I don't know, boy. You have something like that happen to you. Don't want to pitch, you wouldn't want to pitch away too much, but uh, you know you have to you have to work both sides of the plate. But when you get hit, the pitcher gets hit. It's because he, you know it's usually a pitch away. He has spent nearly two years in the big leagues. In fact, uh, was with the Giants for 18 games in 09 and 2010. Made six major league starts. Also pitched for the Pirates in 2010. Was a Triple A All of last year. One ball, one strength to count to Polanco. Opposite way, that's a base hit going down toward the corner. Pierre all the way to third, and he's going to be waved. The ball died for a moment on Upton. It's an RBI double for Polanco, 7 2 Phillies. That's a good job all the way around. I mean, Juan Samuel waited as long as he could before he decided to send him. And for Polanco, he's been on base four times, make it five times this afternoon, and he has three hits. That extra run, too. It's going to get Papelbon down in the bullpen, it looks like. And we'll, we'll talk about why. Here, here's Polanco. That looks like Placido Polanco hitting a ball hard the other way. And it gets down into that corner. As Tom said, it starts rattling around. Juan Samuel sees how deep Upton is, and he has a guy who can run in Pierre, so he scored him. And safe at second is Placido Polanco, safe and secure from New York life. So now another runner at scoring position for Shane Victorino. And the pitch gets away from Blanco for a moment. And it's 1 0. The reason they're doing that right now, in my opinion, was it was only a four run lead. You're in a hitter's ballpark. They've added that fifth run right now. So they feel a little bit better, and maybe they can even get another one. So they're not going to use Papelbon at this point. And he had just started to get up and throw an out. Now they're going to get Schwimmer up, who just joined the club. Now, if he runs into any kind of trouble, then Papelbon will right. get back up again. And, the, you know, they get caught in between in this right now because you don't want to bring your closer into somebody else's mess either. So what they're, what they're saying is let's get some more here and have a comfortable night and get on the airplane. So, you know, they're, they're, they get caught in between the manager, pitching coach. But there's certain ballparks where you look at a lead and decide how much you think is closer to being comfortable than isn't. There's a fly ball to shallow left. Kubel's got a long run. Bloomquist is out. Kubel comes in. And that's the first out. Victorino is 0 for 5 today, but he uh, 
He had a big at bat in the sixth inning. The whole thing about taking the grand slam out of play that with a five run lead has just done that. I heard Charlie say many times in, in uh, Citizens Bank Park in his mind a four run lead is a save situation. That he'll use that he's and he has over the years because you can score runs there. This place you can score runs. Pence a little number foul and it's 0 1. Colorado's the same way. Yep. You bet. Just in the first two stops on this uh, road trip in San Francisco and San Diego, you're playing in two parks that are not only big, the ball and carry there. He likes that pitch. <laughs> a lot of times where he hits it, it pitch does. Too. Well, that's what that's what you live or die with it on. The opposition knows that, but once in a while, you get you know they get burned with it. Went to the count to Pence. And a called strike three. Two outs. Well, the off day tomorrow and then a four game series against the Chicago Cubs. Let's take a look at our upcoming television schedule, which includes Friday, which includes Friday night at 7 o'clock. We'll be on Comcast Sportsnet. There are seats still available for that ball game. That's Saturday and Sunday, one 7 o'clock start and then one 1 30 start. That means we're on the air at 1 30 and 7. First pitch is at 05 and 35. Then Monday is 7 05. First pitch on the air at 7. And again, there are seats available for that Hatfield Dollar Dog Night at the ballpark. Here's Wigginton. He's one for two today. Extended his hitting streak to 11 games. It's a quiet little 11 gamer. Yeah, he's average at 311. He's 14 for 45 for the season. You know, Wigginton, too, is he's played all over. First and third mostly. Played a little second base. Oh, when they signed him, they said that's what his role would be. He's probably gotten more at bats than anybody anticipated, but that's because of the injuries. Him up shallow left field and Bloomquist, the shortstop, is out there, makes the catch. The inning is over. The Phillies get another one on a double by Placido Polanco. So it's on to the bottom of the ninth inning, and this road trip, which has been so up and down, can finish on a high note if Michael Schwimmer can get the last three outs.
Steals our W Mason delivery of the game. A couple of them to choose from today. Now Cole Hamels did it all today. Pitch great. Swung the bat. He hit long fly ball to center field early in the game. But this one was big and ended. It concluded that five run inning for the Phils when Cole broke his bat and blooped that center single in the center field, knocked in two, and that's our WB Mason delivery of the game. All right, Michael Schwimmer will start the uh, bottom of the ninth inning for the Phillies, up by five. Schwimmer just up from Lehigh Valley, where he had pretty good numbers. He had two saves and three opportunities. An earned run average of 1.04, nine strikeouts in eight and two thirds. And they just want to go out, throw strikes, get some outs, and get them to the airport. In the air to left field playable for John Mayberry just into the game as a defensive replacement and one quick out here in the ninth. I didn't notice if uh, Schwimmer's hand went up or not. I did and it didn't. It didn't. Okay. It looks made that. progress from last year. I remember that his first but who was that Espinosa. Like Danny Espinosa. Yeah. And he put his hand up in the air for that rain delay and the thing went about 450 feet. Schwimmer was an all star last year in the International League. He had two different stints a season ago with the Phillies. He made 12 appearances overall. Justin Upton's one for three. A win here, and the Phillies can pull within a game of 500. Now the Nationals will play later on against the Padres. Doesn't sound like much, but after that game on Monday, huh, three games under 500, and they. They got smoked here. Well, I think even Sunday's game too to the Padres. Another thing that was a, and that game was ugly on Sunday because they played so badly, and on Monday they just pitched poorly. That five-run night got them going a little bit, even though you know it didn't mean anything as far as the outcome of the game. They've hit a little bit since then. Breaking ball for strike. It's one and two to Justin Upton. Schwimmer was called up when Michael Stutes went on a disabled list. With a bum shoulder. He got out here fast. They needed another pitcher today. You know, they got him out here. Now the one-two pitch. A little low, two and two. So Frank Kopenbarger, director of travel, comes into play. You know, there's a lot of different things you have to do. And that's one of those things that, you know, get a guy to a team as quickly as possible when you really need another body. And here he is, and he's in the game. Ground ball over the third. Placido Polanco decides to play it on the short hop. And Upton wasn't really running up the third first base line, so he got him easily. So the Phillies one out away from finishing off this road trip with a five and five record. Charlie reminded everybody too, you know, just one inning at a time. Which leads to one game at a time. And Kubel takes strike uh, or takes ball one. It's one and zero. Oh. Well, yeah, you, you know, you play as poorly as they were playing. You know, you, you just have to go out and play one inning at a time, and just try and get better. And they've gotten a little bit better the last couple of days. And he said that today. He was talking to Jim Salisbury from CSNPhilly.com, and he said, uh, you know, in his eyes. They've gotten better. Like they're playing better. Yeah. Two and one. The count to Cooper. We've got a lot of guys that are being mixed and matched right now, being moved all over the place, different positions. Try to get a lead, take them out for defense. It's a little bit of a challenge, to say the least. Swing and a miss. Two and two. That guy on the mound today, though, that he can make a big difference, like he did. Cole Hamels can straighten a lot of things out. And eight innings today, four hits. Two runs. Lance Nix, Pete Orr, part of that mix that Wills is talking about. They've contributed these last couple of days. It's two and two to Kubel. Blues fans on their feet near the first base dugout. And a line drive center field. Victorino is there, and the ball game is over. And the Phillies have finished up this road trip with a five and five record. As they've won for the second consecutive day this afternoon, the final score, Philly 7 and the Diamondbacks 2. And you want to talk about a team effort all the way around. The Phillies provided a team effort to defeat the Diamondbacks. Well, Charlie Manuel's team is back above water. They're within a game of 500. 
And they win it 7 to 2. They banged out 13 hits this afternoon. So in the last two ball games, the Phil's offense, 15 runs and 25 hits. That's a pretty good turnaround from where they were, not only at the start of the season, but also at the start of this road trip. So handshakes all the way around our Chevrolet player of the game. We talked about the offense, but today it was a lot about pitching. Yeah, and it was only a one nothing game until they got into the sixth inning. So when you have a starter like Cole Hamels out there, you know, he'll let you hang around. And then if you score some runs, you can win a ball game. That's what he did. He was really good in this game. Gave up a leadoff double, then retired, what, 18 in a row, 19 in a row, whatever it was. He used a curveball. I mean, he used his cutter really well. He had a great changeup. Uses four seam fastball, and then started to run a curveball out again. Had one hiccup in the seventh inning when he walked the batter and gave up some hits, but he was just tremendous today. And he is our Chevrolet player of the game. And the guy who caught that game for him and called it is down there with our Greg Murphy. Carlos Ruiz. Murph. All right, thanks a lot, Wheels. Uh, here with Carlos Ruiz. Uh, three hits today. The offense really getting going over the last two games. That that has to feel good, not only for yourself, but for this team. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm happy, you know, with this game. And then we've seen the ball better, you know, and I hope we, uh, we can do that. You had a chance to have a pretty good seat to watch Cole Hamels work today, and he was pretty darn good. So tell us a little bit about his outing, because it's a good part of this game. He was untouchable. I mean, he's uh, makes it all real good. That change was working real good today, quarter. And then also we used a curveball late in the game, so that was big for him. And then he, he did a great job. You finish up the road trip at uh, 5-5 five and five and uh, get to head back home and now play some games at home. Again, a good sign for this team, I would imagine. Yeah, definitely, you know. Uh, now we go home and then... We're happy, you know, that we got, the, uh, I mean, not a, a good series, but, and uh, we play better right now, so we, uh, we, I hope, you know, we can uh, keep doing that. Carlos, thanks a lot. Appreciate right, it. No Guys, back upstairs. All right, Murph, thank you very much. We appreciate it. The Phillies win it 7-2. to two. They wrap up this road trip with a 5-5 five and five record. They've taken two of three from the defending American League West champions. We'll be back to talk more about it right after this.